What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this really cool flip top tool stand. It holds two bench top tools. The top flips over, as the name implies, allowing you to store two bench top tools in the space and footprint of one. It's also got a great drawer for storing all the little accessories that go with these two tools. And it's just another awesome shop organization build. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the project. So this flip top stand is one of those projects that I've been putting off for months all the while tripping over the tools that were destined for the stand as they sat on my shop floor. When I was working on the Murphy bed project a few weeks ago, I realized that the leftover pieces were just about enough for this flip top stand. So I decided it was finally time to build it. So this stand is based on plans from my buddy Brad over at Fix This Build That, and I'll have an affiliate link to the plans in the video description below in case you're interested in building one of these for yourself. I made some adjustments to the plan to make the cart a little bit taller so that I could hold my hollow chisel mortiser, but most bench top tools will fit on Brad's original stand design. Up to this point, you've just seen me breaking down the parts on the table saw and drilling some pocket holes, which is how the main carcass of the stand is put together. Once the pocket holes were drilled, I attached the bottom to both of the sides and then added the top of the drawer compartment again with pocket holes. I cut some spacer blocks to rest that top piece on, which was extremely helpful in making sure it was evenly spaced from the bottom. Also, Brad's plans call for these pocket holes to face the inside of the drawer compartment, but I had a fresh tattoo when working on this project and really didn't feel like scraping it up, reaching into the drawer compartment to drive in those pocket screws. Next, I installed the back of the drawer compartment, which I just attached with some screws through the sides, top and bottom of the drawer compartment. And pocket holes would have also been great here, but I put away my pocket hole jig before realizing I needed holes in this piece and just didn't feel like pulling it back out. Now, I jumped the gun a little bit here, assembling the carcass before making some cutouts in the sides, but with some careful measurement, things ended up working out fine. So first, I needed to drill a three quarter inch hole into each side panel. And this is where the metal pipe that the whole platform spins around is mounted through. I also needed to cut the groove for the locking hardware. So I first drilled a hole to set the end point of the groove and then drew some lines that intersected with those holes with a square and then cut out the rest of the groove with a jigsaw. Next, I worked on the drawer box and this was just made up of a mix of three quarter inch and half inch plywood scraps, but it'd really be best to use quarter inch plywood for the drawer bottom so that you don't waste extra storage space. I assembled the drawer box with glue and pin nails and then went back and reinforced everything with inch and a quarter screws. With the drawer box finished, I could go ahead and install the drawer slides. And these are 18 inch overextension slides from Rockler. And I really like using overextension slides on drawers like this so you can easily get to this stuff in the very back of the drawer without any issues. To install the drawer, I added some eighth inch plywood strips below the drawer box and then added one screw at a time, slowly sliding out the drawer box. And to get to that last screw, I did have to remove the drawer box and attach the final screw. Once all the screws were added, I could install the drawer, making sure to add a little pull tab made from some gaffer's tape so I could actually open the drawer again, and everything was working smoothly. Next, I cut the drawer front to size at the table saw and then installed it, first attaching it with a few pin nails to hold it in place, and then reinforcing it with some inch and a quarter screws from the inside of the drawer box. With the cabinet basically finished, I could add some three inch locking casters before flipping the sand upright, and if I had to do this again, I would have used the Rockler workbench casters instead as the added height of my customized stand plus the casters made the whole unit a little bit on the tall side. Next, I could get to work on the platform that the tools are attached to, starting by cutting down some one by two pieces over the miter saw. And these pieces are used as blocking between the top and bottom panels of the platform and give the whole platform more support. The first pieces of 1x2 to attach were the two center pieces which capture the metal pipe and are what the whole platform kind of rests on as it spins around. I centered the pieces, making sure there was a 3 quarter inch gap between them, and then tacked them in place with pin nails and reinforced them with inch and a quarter screws. The other two long 1x2 pieces needed a slot cut into each end to accept the locking hardware. And to cut these slots, I whipped up a quick little tenoning jig using some plywood scraps, and then cut in the slots at the table saw. These slots are an inch and a half deep and 5 16th of an inch wide and are centered in each end of these pieces. With the slots cut, I could attach these pieces along with the rest of the blocking pieces to the underside of the platform, again using pin nails followed by inch and a quarter countersunk screws. After attaching the pieces around the perimeter of the platform, I needed to attach more blocking pieces where the tools would be attached. And I laid those pieces out using the tools as reference and then attached them again using more pin nails and screws. 
Once all the blocking was added, I could attach the other platform on top of the blocking, sandwiching those 1x2s between the two platforms. And it was really critical that all the edges were flush here, so I first tacked the platform in place to keep it from shifting around while I added some screws. And you can see here how the whole platform looks from the side once it's assembled, with that center channel for the 3 quarter inch metal pipe, and then the corner cutouts for the locking hardware. Speaking of the locking hardware, next it was time to get those parts installed. First I needed to drill a 1 inch diameter recessed hole to accept a 3 8 inch flat washer, which I drilled with a Forster bit. Next, using a 3 8 inch twist bit, I drilled a through hole going through the center of both of those recessed holes. The locking hardware is made up of a 3 8 inch washer in each of the recessed holes, then a 3 8 inch bolt and nut that run through those holes, with a 5 16 inch by 3 and a quarter inch long eye bolt added in the corner cutout. The eye bolt has a fender washer and rockler star knob added, and this is how the whole platform locks into place. And it's important to add some thread locker to that 3 8 inch nut just to keep it in place over time. Finally, I can install the platform onto the stand. So first I attach the 3 quarter inch pipe through one of the holes in the sides with only about an inch of the pipe sticking out, and then rested the platform on some clamps I had set up while threading a little bit of the pipe through the hole in the center of the platform. Once the pipe was threaded in a little bit, I clamped the platform in place and then drove it through the rest of the platform with a rubber mallet. And this whole process would have been a heck of a lot easier with a second set of hands, but my impatience got the best of me. With the pipe all the way through the platform and sides, I could test out the flipping mechanism and it worked really great, super, super smooth. Next, I cut the pipe to final length, leaving about half an inch of pipe sticking out on each side of the stand. And I used a porta band for this, but a hacksaw or reciprocating saw would have worked just as well. To lock the platform to the pipe and keep it from shifting around over time, I drilled a hole through the top of the platform into the middle pipe and then added an inch and a quarter screw through the platform through to the pipe. To cover up the pipe sticking out from the sides of the stand, I cut some little plywood blocks and drilled a recessed 3 quarter inch hole in the center of the pieces. I added the pieces to the sides of the stand, making sure they were nice and square to the top edge, and then used pin nails and inch and a quarter screws to attach them. With the stand assembled, I could break all the sharp edges with my random orbit sander, and then I could get the tools installed. I used some 3.5 inch fast cap power head screws to do this, and just made sure the screws went through the blocking between the platforms. Off camera, I also added a few more screws to act as cord management, which is really helpful to keep things out of the way when flipping the platform. One more final touch was to figure out what I wanted to store in the drawer, and I decided to use this new lock align system from Rockler to organize the drawer. And while I'm organizing, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. I used a ton of Rockler products during this build, including their 5-star knob, total lock swivel casters, and lock and align drawer organizer, and I'll have links to all the items I used in the video description below. Rockler's got tons of great tools and accessories for your next build, and they're always coming up with new and innovative ideas to help make your woodworking more efficient and more enjoyable. Thanks again to Rockler for sponsoring this build. The final piece to add to the cart was a drawer pull, and I usually like to just use some shop-made pulls on shop furniture like this. I have an older video on this process, and it's kind of interesting to look back at those videos and see how much my shop has changed, but these are free and they're a great way to use up some plywood scraps. After attaching the drawer pull to the drawer, I can call the cart done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this build. I am so glad to finally have this one checked off my list. These two tools have literally been sitting on my shop floor since I've owned them. They've always been in the way. Cords get caught on them. I trip over them. It's just a pain. So having both of these accessible and easy to use means I'm gonna probably use these two tools a lot more. Also that little storage drawer to be able to store all the accessories that go with these two tools is awesome. Just really happy with the way this thing came together. So Brad did an awesome job on this design. If you guys wanna build this thing, again, he does have plans available. I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below. That helps me out, helps him out, helps to support two content creators, so that's always good. Also in the video description below, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I used on this project. It's a pretty simple material list, really just one sheet of plywood and some hardware and you're pretty much good to go. Also, I've got these new shirts available. They're available through Teespring, so you can get them on all kinds of different merch, women's t-shirts, mugs, stickers, all kinds of stuff. So I'll have a link to that in the video description below as well. And last, I have added that new YouTube sponsor or I guess membership functionality they're calling it now. It's a great way to support me, get some behind the scenes content. I've started doing monthly Q and A's. So if you guys have some questions you want me to answer in a little bit more detail, that's a great place to get it done. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll have a link somewhere on the screen and also it will be below. So thanks again for watching everybody and until next week, happy building.